F-35 is the jet that ate the Pentagon. It's devouring the budget, and it's devouring the Pentagon's air capability. What it looks like now is we're probably going to spend twice as much as we thought on the system. You're talking about one and a half trillion dollars. One and a half trillion dollars for a plan that so far has not worked. At a time when they're cutting the budget for cops and teachers, it's extraordinary, phenomenally expensive. And it's never been in combat. The airplane is so complex and horrendously designed that we'll be lucky if we can fly it every other day. It won't be ready for combat on the current schedule until about 2019, almost 10 years late. The biggest beneficiary of the F-35 is Lockheed Martin. War profiteering is a very easy source of money if you don't worry about what's right and wrong. Lockheed Martin getting $36 billion a year of our tax money and much of that rolls over into profit. These people are being paid with our tax dollars because most of the money that these defense contractors bring in are taxpayer dollars through government contracts. I think a lot of what the contractors do is basically legalize greed. The F-35 was sold as sort of this great bargain for the country. The whole purpose behind F-35 was to develop a family and lower the total cost. The idea was we could make the unit cost of this very inexpensive if we got all the services, the Air Force, the Navy, and the Marine Corps to buy a version of the F-35. We're very focused on giving the taxpayer in the Department of Defense very good value for a dollar that is spent. But it's just this Rube Goldberg contraption where you've got all these complex things that you're trying to do building around the same airframe. It tries to do all sorts of things, none of them well. So there was this whole series of things that it could not do. So in that sense, it was probably the worst possible choice in terms of an affordable aircraft. But it's great for Lockheed Martin because they're going to have cost overruns because they're not ready. They don't work yet. And they're going to fix the things later at our expense. But they're already building them in the hundreds. Right from the start, Lockheed had a terrible program plan to make sure that the money flow would never get interrupted. And that was the idea of concurrent development. Concurrency is a wonkish term for buying the airplane as you're developing it and purchasing what you think are going to be combat-ready models before you've finished the testing. And by the time you've tested the airplane and realized it's a disaster, you've already bought a huge number of them. You're committed, as we say in the Pentagon, you've gotten pregnant, right? And that's the whole purpose of concurrent development is to get the public, the taxpayer, the Congress, everybody committed to this flow of money before you know anything about whether the money is going for anything worthwhile. Lockheed Martin is the number one defense contractor in terms of spending. Since 1989, Lockheed Martin has made more than $21 million in campaign contributions to Congress. So Buck McKeon, for example, who heads the Armed Services Committee in the House, gets three quarters of a million dollars for his campaigns just since 2009. And then for the defense industry, the lifeblood on Capitol Hill is lobbying. When big defense contractors pay lobbyists in Washington, it's actually some of the best money they spend. The return on their investment tends to be huge. They have a thousand lobbyists or more, uh, about two for every member of Congress. The amount of money that's gone into making sure that this plane kept flying that the development kept going. There's been so much spent on this in terms of convincing Congress and convincing the American public, too, that this is a wonderful plane. And of course, they're funding about one out of every 10 members of Congress as part of the Joint Strike Fighter Caucus. Members who've got maybe part of an engine built here, tire is built there, and they get behind it because they can say, you know, it's jobs for my district. The defense manufacturers are selling big time the jobs they say they're creating. What we found there was that the numbers were grotesquely inflated. In other words, they don't just count line worker riveting wings at the Fort Worth plant. They also count the McDonald's off the plant because somebody going home is going to buy uh, a Big Mac. Uh, and that, of course, is the job generated by the F-35, they claim.
That's an effort to get the hook in with members of Congress to intimidate them that if they side against the airplane, there's going to be X number of jobs lost. They'd say, oh my goodness, it's going to cost a million jobs. Never mind whether it works or not, you know. We got to keep building it because we got to keep people working. But the defense budget is a lousy engine for jobs. If you take any dollar of government spending, education, health, or just tax cuts, you get more bang for the buck than you do in defense. A billion dollars to, it's about 11,000 jobs if you put it into the military. Transportation generates about 17,000 jobs, about 19,000 if you put it into healthcare, even more if you put it into education. Putting all that spending back into the private economy generates more jobs than uh, are generated by, uh, by military spending contractors are all interested in making sure that their programs have smooth sailing through the Pentagon and through Congress and a key mechanism to make sure that happens is the revolving door. People who are in positions of power in the Pentagon can leave their government jobs where they've been in positions of approving contracts and after a short cooling off period can then go to work for the very companies who contracts they approved. So what this revolving door system does is make sure the F-35 program survives, no matter how screwed up it is. The F-35, touted as a tremendous boon to American air power, in fact, is a terrible weakening of American air power. Every extra F-35 we buy means American air power has gone downhill. First of all, simply because everyone we buy will be essentially useless in combat and a danger to the pilot. Secondly, because of the huge expense. There's huge overhead. They're not adequately audited. We don't know where all that money is going because the program hasn't had that kind of audit and desperately needs that kind of audit. You know, if you or I can't pass an audit, we're in trouble. Pentagon can't pass an audit. We throw them another $700 billion as if nothing's happened. The most important thing people can do about it is to demand the truth, to write to their congressmen about the horrible waste of money, to vote against congressmen who vote for it, and to demand that the media come up with the truth. Cutting defense is the only way to reform this monster. People are going to start to understand, if you look carefully at what the Pentagon and the contractors are doing, much of this is not defending us. It's just defending their bottom lines. It's not defending the country.